Okay, I got so much hate when I talked about why I quit pre-med on TikTok, so I thought I'd bring it over here to just go into things a little detailed. I just graduated college and now I am working in tech at Google as a product marketing manager. I did pre-med in college. I was a nutri minor, a business major, and now I thought I'd explain. If you're new, definitely subscribe and follow me on my other platforms. I'm gonna be posting more about new grad, working in tech, women, lifestyle, and career things as a Gen Z-er. <laughs> so I hope you all stick around. Okay, a little background information. I came into college, econ business, and I was really ambitious and I wanted to do it. I get to Berkeley, it's really toxic, it's competitive. I completely lose my love for learning. And so I decided to pick up pre-med because it excited me, I was interested, I felt challenged again. I also found like a path that was inspiring me and I have like a set future that I can look forward to. I was a NutriSci minor. I was so close to picking up the major and I did a business major as well. Shadow doctors, I volunteered, I did lab work and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. And I was always interested in the intersection between business, healthcare tech, healthcare admin, just a lot of more of that structural change, even just more of that modernization of healthcare and um, medicine, all that stuff. So that was definitely more of my interest. And I always knew if I went to medical school, I wanted to get an MD, MBA. So that was kind of, in my head at that time. Junior year, I was applying to different internships because it's really common to have a gap year before medical school, whether it's consulting or working in a lab or volunteer or research or banking or working in a tech company. I feel like these days, the more unique, the cooler the story, like the more you're gonna be able to stand out. And honestly, I think that they just encourage whatever you're passionate about. So I was interviewing at tech companies, um, investment banking, healthcare, consulting healthcare, health tech companies. And I actually landed my dream internship at Google as a product marketing manager. and I. I think that flipped the switch for me, deciding that, hey, like I could do something that wasn't medicine. I'll definitely go into it in another video why I chose tech, but I actually think the more I think about it, the reason why I chose pre-med in the first place was I think I was trying to buy myself some time. I was so sick of that toxic competitive culture, everybody getting an internship their freshman year, their sophomore year, but because when I said, oh, I'm business pre-med, it'd get people off my back. I can do my own thing. I can study, be challenged, volunteer, work in health tech, all that stuff and not feel the need to have the answers right away as a lot of business communities and students have been. Deep down also, I was, wasn't sure if I could be successful in business and business alone or in marketing. So I think that also attributed to why I did pre-med. And I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just telling you my honest kind of thought process of how I got to that conclusion. And I think getting that internship gave me that confidence boost that, oh, Angelica, you could do something that's not in healthcare and still be successful. I definitely needed that push. So the first reason why I decided not to go into medicine was it is a broken system. And of course, never say never. When I say not go into medicine, I mean not go to medical school. You know, I'm always going to be personally interested in healthcare, healthcare admin, healthcare tech. Like these are the podcasts and stories and articles that I always read upon. But I think COVID really showed how flawed and how broken the healthcare system is. So beyond any you know political party or doctor or pharmaceutical company. There's just so many things that go into healthcare in America and, and the things I was more interested of, obviously the healthcare admin space or the health tech. Is it even worth going to medical school to become a practicing doctor to do those things where obviously I had a really good time doing patient shadowing and that one-on-one -on -one care. But even that I also knew, would that have been fulfilling for me? And like, would I have wanted more? And if that's the case, is that worth going to medical school? There's just so many things that go into it. The fact that now doctors are you know, encouraged to see 40 patients a day and it's like 10 minutes and then they're out and 10 minutes and they're out and trying to increase profits and whatever it is there's just like so many things that are beyond my control i was questioning if i was ready to go into such a broken system and a lot of doctors actually discouraged me to go into medicine because it was so broken and frustrating and of course not to say that the impact that they're doing on the one-on-one -on -one level wasn't enough, but to ask myself, there are other interests that I have that maybe those are better to pursue and still make an impact in healthcare and work in health tech. And they really said, Angelica, if you cannot picture yourself doing anything else beyond besides medicine, then go into it. So that's kind of when things are to you know switch gears for me. This next one is for all these righteous God complex pre-med people when they're like, oh my gosh, I want to be a doctor because I want to help people. There are other ways you could help people. You can be a nurse. And of course, they're like, oh, well, I don't want to be a nurse. Well, I hope you have a good answer for that because I'm pretty sure that's one of the most popular medical school admissions questions is why don't you want to be a nurse or a PA versus a doctor without seeming like you just want 
higher position and ego anyways my school had so many of those like god complex kids who are like i just have to help people and it's my calling first of all there are other ways to help people whether it's in education be a teacher work in a tech or nonprofit space or be an engineer or, like i don't know there's just so many different things you could do to help people i find that argument to be very flawed okay you don't have to go to medical school to do that the debt and finances. I talked about this in my TikTok and I got so much hate like, ooh, she just wants to go into tech because like she wants to be wealthy and rich. No, that's not the reason. And two, being a doctor and going through medical school and residency is a lot of debt and financial commitments to sign up for. And especially if you come from a low working class background, again, if you come from those backgrounds and you went through medical school and you are a doctor now, that is only more power to you because it is so hard. You essentially don't have an income until residency, which is like four or five years. And then when you get to residency, the average salary for a residency I believe is anywhere from 40k to 60k depending on where you work and I'm not saying that's like oh my gosh I just can't live off of that money because a lot of Americans unfortunately live off of that or lower because they live below the poverty line but if you are coming from a university where you could have made that money as an entry-level position somewhere else and in that time make money build your career get promotions make a higher salary be more financially stable there's also the opportunity cost that you just can't ignore and you have to ask yourself okay after residency you get you know your normal doctor salary which is obviously going to be more than residency that also depends on what type of um, specialty you tested into with the step one step two exams which are also extremely difficult and obviously the more high paying a doctor positions like dermatology or plastics or surgery stuff they have the highest scores needed that are extremely competitive and even matching into those programs there's like only a few hundred spots each year so again it's all these variations that you can't even predict for as much as you love medicine now so that was also a thing i was considering was that there's also no guarantee what my salary would look like after i was a doctor and i know i'm talking about salary but i think it'd be naive to pick a job and not think about salary especially if you're investing two hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of debt at least obviously plus or minus if you get scholarships but um, it's hard. It's a lot of money and I don't think we can ignore the debt and the undergrad debt potentially the medical school debt The personal loans you take out for a car or for a house when you are not making a lot of money as a resident So I don't know. It's a lot to ask for someone So I personally did not have that patience and the confidence so secure of that kind of unpredictable path everywhere that I would feel comfortable going into medicine I think people think all doctors are just super rich, but there are a lot of doctors, you know, especially primary care physicians who don't get paid well and they also are in high demand and they're burnt out and they're doing what I think some of the most important work in healthcare. Not like everybody's a millionaire just because you're a doctor either. And yeah, so I think that people need to get rid of that notion that, oh yeah, I mean, everybody has debt, it's okay, normalize it. And then once you just become a working doctor, it's all gonna be okay. The debt doesn't go away. You still have to pay for that. It just wasn't for me the lifestyle i personally was not ready and fully sure that i wanted to give up a large portion of my 20s from 21 to 22 to 31 to 32. it wasn't just like oh i wanted to party all the time and i don't want to study because i'm sure medical students have a good time and they enjoy you know socializing and with their medical students and i'm sure they still have somewhat of a life but i'm also talking about the unpredictable nature of going to medical school residency finding a job internship where it's different cities uh, sometimes they're not in the hot big cities that you really want to live in or then I want to buy a house or settling down or buying a car and me as someone who comes from a working class background obviously if you're working class and you're a doctor it's only more of a testament of how hard that was because I can only imagine how hard the sacrifices have been and obviously the opportunity cost so I just wasn't sure I wanted that lifestyle and I think I was not patient enough to um, wait out 10 12 years before I can really feel stable and secure not that you can't feel stable and secure before that but in the traditional ways of a house and you know feeling like you have situated yourself somewhere so that's that and of course the studying and the material it's a lot and the you know shadowing the rotations and it's so much work and it's really draining on anybody and so i have so much respect for people who can confidently 
you know, choose that lifestyle. This is not to say that I didn't do well in pre-med because I think a lot of the hate comments were like, she just was not smart enough to be a doctor. She just couldn't do it. Or like, tell me you couldn't get into medical school without telling me. First of all, I don't know if I would have gotten into medical school or not. I never applied. I didn't take the MCAT. All I know is that I successfully finished the pre-med courses at Berkeley. I got good grades and I had GPAs that were, you know, more than qualified to get into like good medical schools or any medical school because any medical school is a good medical school because it is so hard so that was never the issue of like oh my gosh i did i quit pre-med because i thought i couldn't get into medical school i think it was more along the lines of i also was really passionate about marketing and business and strategy work and those are also some skill sets i had and i knew i wanted to one day mesh that with medicine but then the opportunity of me you know working in tech came along and then the path to medicine or the purpose for me to going to medical school became more faded as i was thinking about it like oh, I would love to work in healthcare tech or biotech. Maybe I won't even get my residency stuff. So then it's like, what's the point of going to medical school if there are other ways I can build my career in the same time? So that was kind of my logic thought process and thinking about how I really wanted to utilize my skills and the opportunity came into me in my lap and I you know, really enjoyed my internship and succeeded at my internship. I got my full-time job. I think that's definitely what the signal was. And who knows, maybe down the line, I end up hate working in tech or I pivot to biotech or healthcare tech and I decide, hey, I want to go to medical school and I'll still have the option to do so because I finished pre-med stuff. So, you know, never say never, but at least for now. If I can get you to take away one thing from this video is that nobody is destined to do anything. Number one, destiny is for losers. And second, you can be anything and everything and different things. At the age of 18 to 21, I think it's extremely, I don't know, limiting to be like, oh, I just can't be an accountant. I just can't be a lawyer. I just can't be an engineer. We're all kind of learning and figuring it out. And of course, for exceptionally for the few that are naturally gifted in certain areas, I feel like majority of people learn on the job through internships, through experiences, pivot, and a lot of skills that are in the workforce, I feel like are teachable. Don't limit yourself. I feel like it's extremely insulting to humans and to people to and really undersell our value that we're not adaptable, that we can't learn, we can't do different things. We don't have more to offer than just one specific skill set for a career. There are so many different things you could do. Even if you love being a doctor and you feel like you're really good you know, at the pre-med sciences, there are so many other things you could do and still succeed and be great. That doesn't have to be a practicing doctor. And I don't want people to limit themselves because you know, they just feel like, oh, I, I just have to do this. No, you don't have to do anything. And there are so many great things that you could do because you're talented and you have the ability and you can learn and you'll pivot. And I feel like these days, or not these days, for quite some time, we're kind of over the era of doing a one set profession for the rest of your life. And everybody's pivoting, even people like who have super stable set careers, like doctors and lawyers and engineers, they pivot all the time, they change careers. And even the executives and CEO, CMOs at these top companies, it's not like they have did the same position at a smaller level um, their entire career. No, they jumped around, they tried this, they were you know, in a position that they had no qualifications for and then they learn, they had nothing to do with this and they just, it's a lot of this to get to where they are. So you don't have to have it figured out right now. And it's a job, it doesn't have to be your life calling. It's extremely privileged if your job is also your passion and pays well and it's your hobby and you love it and it's also fulfilling and it helps the environment. And all these things is great, but it's just not realistic because I think a lot of people at the end of the day are just trying to put food on the table and it's a job and it pays the bills. So let's get that pressure off of you and yeah, just do what you want, try different things. You are not set to do anything. Like you can't, like you can learn it. And I believe in you and I think most people could do a little bit of everything besides the stuff that they absolutely hate <laughs> which is good to know well that is it for this video i hope that you all enjoyed it this was just my little reflection on why i decided not to go into medical school who knows never say never maybe a few years down the line or 15 years or 20 years i decided to change my mind but as of now i'm extremely happy at my new job and i'm going to be making another video about why i chose tech instead of other business positions so i hope you all stick around for that let me know if you have any questions below again if you're going to medical school and you're pre-med and you're interested good luck you got this this. I am cheering you on and if this helped you just open the conversation or even possibilities of what you want to do That's all what I'm really here for and yeah, I will see you all in the next one